The proof of the pudding of any federal initiative is in the implementation. And as New Jersey prepares for the Every Student Succeeds Act, the successor to No Child Left Behind, the legislature's Joint Committee on the Public Schools heard testimony about what the process will be like and who's going to have a say in that implementation. There's a lot for us to learn, and the goal of today's hearing is to do just that, is to begin the conversation so that we all understand what the implications of this new act are. You could call ESSA No Child Left Behind light, in that it keeps most of the NCLB intact, with a focus on English, language arts, and math proficiency, as well as graduation rates. But the biggest difference, according to Charmaine Mercer of the Learning Policy Institute, is that it returns a lot of decision-making authority to the state. Similar to NCLB, states are required to have challenging academic content standards that are aligned with its academic assessments, and they must comply or must apply to all public schools and public students in the state. Unlike NCLB, ESSA requires that the standards be aligned with entrance requirements for credit-bearing coursework at state higher education institutions and with relevant career and technical education standards. It sounds like something everyone can agree on, but this is New Jersey. An agreement on everything is almost constitutionally verboten. This policy comes from a Democratic administration, but New Jersey's Department of Education, which will be responsible for creating a state plan to comply with the federal guidelines, is controlled by a Republican. So you can expect that, especially in an election year, disagreements are bound to crop up. When will they start developing this plan and when will they disseminate it for public review? So we are currently developing the plan right now and as I mentioned, going back and forth with stakeholders as we develop different pieces. And then we hope to publish the plan this winter and allow a minimum of 30 days for public reaction to the total plan, but we do hope to get that out earlier than that. So but if no. this 20 or 30 person group gets public input and decides to ignore the public input, they can still submit it to the federal government for, a, for approval. I think that we have a pretty good system where I, folks I, in the field will hold us accountable. Also noted the assemblyman, there's going to be a new governor just as this plan is sent to the feds. So let's say the new governor and the, and the Department of Education the, the support team that he or she adopts has a different view. How can this, can this be amended on an annual basis? Is this plan, how long will, how long will the state of New Jersey be obligated to follow this plan? We do submit it every, we submit every four years. And so we will be obligated to follow our plan for about four years. The fact is there are more questions than answers in this early stage of development. Will the park test be the standardized test then? How much will test scores weigh on teacher evaluations? What about charter schools or so-called community schools? Will the plan favor one over the other? What resources are there for parents? All good questions with answers theoretically coming over the course of the next year. In Trenton, I'm David Cruz, NJTV News.